you're listening to The Olive Tree with me, Julia Fisher, the programme that brings you the stories of Arab Christians and Jewish believers in Jesus living in Israel and the Palestinian areas today. This week we hear again from Nashat Filman, director of the Palestinian Bible Society based in Jerusalem. His father came to Jerusalem from Egypt, met his wife, and Nashat was brought up in the old city where he went to school. He went on to study hotel management in Bethlehem and longed to work in that field. But in 1995, he had to make a choice. Accept a job managing a hotel or manage a bookshop for the Bible Society. Here's Nashat. I, again, have decided to not to manage a hotel, but to manage a bookshop at the Bible Society. At that time, in '95, we had a, a bookshop in the, just outside of the old city of Jerusalem, and uh, I was offered to manage the bookshop and uh, be the bookkeeper accountant for the Bible Society. And I accepted that offer and joined then the Bible Society. I also joined because I felt that the Lord is calling me to do so very strongly. And I also felt that there is something unique about the Bible Society within our family. Uh, At that time, I looked at the Bible Society and the history of the Bible Society, and and I found out that my grandfather used to minister with the Bible Society, and then my uncle used to minister with the Bible Society, and another relative of my family. So I thought, uh, wow, this is significant, and... uh, It seems that there is some kind of uh, a divine uh, relation because my ambition were somewhere else, totally somewhere else. But still I felt strongly that the Lord is uh, wanting me uh, at the Bible Society at that time. So that's how I started. Uh, Very young, managing a small bookshop, selling Bibles, giving out more than selling actually, for free, giving out for free, and welcoming people and... uh, uh, helping them through their journey with the Bible. So you wanted to find a way of combining your work at Bible Society in the bookshop with with opening some sort of a coffee shop then? What I felt is that the Lord has trained me into hotel and restaurant management and into serving food, uh, allowed me to, do, to get this training, but he shifted that and into bringing me into the Bible Society where we, in a way or another, serve spiritual food for the people and uh, I don't know it might sound funny but it's it's a little bit similar you know serving uh, physical food and serving spiritual food you have to do it with an attitude you have to do it with a respect and you have to do it with uh, with always a smile and uh, honoring the person and respecting the person that is uh, receiving it and uh, that's one of the of the things that I took with me together with other things but uh, I feel it's a great honor to have this shift given to me from the Lord to serve and give out the Bibles to the people of the Holy Land. Uh, It's a great mission that I'm so honored to, to be involved in. Nashat, in those days you you weren't married, you were still still a single man? Yes, I was a single man and I was also uh, very much into uh, media. So I used to finish my hours at the Bible Society and then after that go and do something else with the ministry and producing uh, radio programs, uh, DVDs and things like that and giving them out to the people as well. So that was another thing that I was involved in. So I used to work till around 10, 11 every day. Uh, and I mean, with lots of joy and happiness. I was very happy. And then uh, one time we were looking for uh, somebody to work at the Bible Society at our branch at the Living Stones in Birzeit. And uh, uh, I was at the interview and uh, many people applied and we decided that we're going to interview three people. And uh, this beautiful girl comes in with a red jacket and sits down and... uh, we started asking her questions about her life, what she's doing, um, and uh, her career. And then I thought, wow, this is something. <laughs> Maybe I should employ her forever. <laughs> uh, I actually employed her because she was qualified, but uh, I felt that 
there's something else that could be developed. And after maybe a year and a half, two years, we started uh, going out with each other. And uh, yeah, she's my wife now. Her name is Nisreen. Is she a Palestinian lady? Yes, she is Palestinian. Uh, was born in Jerusalem, actually, but lived her life, most of her life, in Ramallah. Uh, she was born to a family that is very much involved in uh, in business in Ramallah. And, uh, yeah, she studied in the States and came back here to finish her last year at Birzeit University. And then uh, we actually wanted her to join the Bible Society, and she applied. and Things worked out. Of course, you know that I am a Jerusalemite, carrying a Jerusalem ID, and she's a Palestinian. That's a, a big challenge that we have at the moment with family u- reunification. Just to explain to our listeners, that means that tra- traveling in the area, in and out of the West Bank for her, is, is a problem in and out of it. She can't come into Israel easily. Yes, it's, there is a new law that was set by Israel, or confirmed actually by the Supreme Court of Israel just a week ago, stating that uh, uh, Palestinians who are married to uh, Jerusalemites or Israeli Arabs are not anymore allowed to get family uh, reunification. So simply that means that uh, uh, they cannot get into the process of getting an Israeli ID. Uh, which means for us that every year we have to apply for a military uh, permission or permit to get from the military every year. And the process takes at least three to four months just to get this permit. And once she, she has this permit, she, she's not supposed to drive or work or uh, travel from Ben Gurion Airport. She's allowed only to be with us at home. So that's uh, not an easy, uh, not an easy thing at all for us. So you're living with these complicating factors, but trying to do a job. You're now director of the Palestinian Bible Society here in uh, in Jerusalem, based in Jerusalem, working closely with your Jewish counterpart, carrying the heart of both peoples, both Jewish people and Arab people. But let's talk about the work that you're doing amongst the Palestinian people now, much of it in the West Bank, where the population is majority Muslim. Yes, we we cover West Bank, East Jerusalem and uh, Gaza Strip. Uh, the population, as you were saying, uh, almost 99% uh, Muslims and uh, uh, in the early 90s, when I started working with the Bible Society, we were just providing the Bible in Arabic for the people. That was uh, our approach. But later on, we, we found out that this is uh, uh, not sufficient because people have all kinds of other needs. And uh, the Bible also, and the New Testament, doesn't mean much to the Muslim community because they believe that it is it has been corrupted and they believe that is it is irrelevant to their uh, current days therefore our approach shifted a little bit we continue distributing and providing the word of god in a language that they understand and uh, in a price that they can afford but at the same time we started developing our community development arm within the palestinian bible society where we have an arm to help people and to uh, uh, support them in their needs, in their physical needs. So we do lots of relief programs. In Gaza, we help every month 100 families. Uh, We've been doing that for the past two and a half years. Uh, We also do micro enterprises, uh, giving people nets, for example, to fish, uh, giving them uh, cars to drive uh, and... uh, We also do uh, training courses all over the West Bank. Uh, We do uh, uh, raising awareness, English as a second language, computer courses. Uh, We also do training on um, uh, uh, languages, other languages, cultural evenings, uh, special work with the young people and children we have. So we started with two or three people in Jerusalem. And I look at uh, the blessings of the Lord of the Lord now, we are almost 40 people and we have at least 12 centers uh, and more than 20 programs 
all through the West Bank and Gaza Strip. And that's a great blessing uh, from the Lord. And we know that uh, the Lord has, uh, has been with us uh, and through everything, through every stage of the Bible Society. And um, yesterday I was told the story. Uh, one of our programs, we were uh, reaching out to uh, some families and uh, one of the ladies came to us and said, she told us, why are you doing all of that? Why are you, you so much involved in the community? And we feel that you are you know, so close to us, actually closer than our own family members. And the answer was, because simply we love you and simply we care for you, just as you are. Uh, and then she, she, she went into tears and she said, uh, I've never seen such love in my life. And of course, we spent some quality time with her and we prayed with her. Uh, but we also felt that the Lord is calling us to, to these true seekers, those who are very much interested in knowing and uh, looking for the true love that we can, I mean, through Christ, give to the people. Nashat Filman sharing his story. And we'll hear more from Nashat on next week's program when he describes some of the opportunities and challenges he faces in his role as director of the Palestinian Bible Society based in Jerusalem. You're listening to The Olive Tree with me, Julia Fisher. The Olive Tree Reconciliation Fund is a Christian charity based in the UK that supports the needs of both Jewish and Arab Christians living in the Holy Land, especially those involved in reconciliation. So, if you would like to know more about our work and receive our free bi-monthly newsletter, please either visit our website, olivetreefund.org, or write to me, Julia Fisher, at the Olive Tree Reconciliation Fund, P.O. Box 850 Horsham RH12 9GA in the UK If you'd like to hear this programme again or any edition of The Olive Tree do visit the website olivetreefund.org Meanwhile, join me at the same time next week for another story from The Olive Tree Until then, goodbye Goodbye